In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to properly use proxy files within Adobe Premiere Pro to edit your next project. This is great if you're using high resolution files like 4K, 8K, 20K, whatever we are on, we're going to be using proxy files so that our CPU, our computer can handle editing those files, adding effects, titles, and graphics to them without slowing down, without any lag. So let's jump into the computer to learn proper proxy workflow in Premiere Pro. I'm in Premiere Pro and I've added a drone shot to a new sequence. It was shot at 4K, so this 3840 by 2160 aspect ratio and that's really big and on most computers unless you have a really fancy nice brand new computer it's going to lag when you start playing especially if you're playing at full quality so the first thing you might want to try if you do have a fast computer if you don't want to use proxy files is dropping this quality even down to one eighth or something that might help you out but even on my computer which was fast a few years ago it's not fast enough to handle this 4k and now 8k footage who knows what we're going to be at in the next decade so we're going to use proxy files which basically replace the 4k footage with a down resolution file it's the same video clip but it's going to be something like 1920 by 1080 or 1280 by 720 or even smaller so that your computer can play it back really easily. So the easy way to do this is if you already have your footage in Premiere Pro, just right click the footage that you wanna create proxies for, go to the proxy menu and choose create proxies. It has several presets that you can use. So I usually just choose the H.264 one. This is remember just for editing. It's not going to be for exporting later on so h264 is great and then i usually just pick the smallest resolution here you can eventually create new presets but we're not going to worry about that next you choose the destination where this file is going to be saved so if you want to you can create a proxy file folder that might be the best thing or it can be pre-saved into really any folder including right next to the original media so i'm going to click ok and now this is going to send this file to Adobe Media Encoder. So Media Encoder will open up and then it will start actually processing this file and creating a new video. You can see that its uh, settings are gonna be 1024 by 540. It's the same frame rate. The target bit rate is smaller. And so this is gonna be a much faster file to work with. Once it's done, if you go back to Premiere Pro, you should be able to tell if the proxy file is working two ways. If you right click this bar right here at the top of your project panel, choose meta display, metadata display, and you go down under these uh, options and check on proxy media file name. I've customized this just to show a few, but if you have that one set on proxy media file name, you'll see that now we have this column and it will show if there is a proxy file or not. That's not only the only thing that you need to do though. Over here, you need to enable proxies to be on. So if you don't see this toggle proxies button, click this little button editor, and then make sure you have the toggle proxies button down there just by simply dragging and dropping it down into this little bar. So now if I play through this, we are still trying to edit our 4K footage. But if I simply click the toggle proxies button and play through it, it starts to play back buttery smooth. So as you can see, if I press the toggle proxies button, you can see that the footage slightly changes just because the aspect is a little bit different. But it, with this on, it's gonna play back way faster, way smoother, and you can go through and edit your project. When you're done, if you want, you can just go ahead and export it and it's going to export it at the full size. So I've just pressed Command M to bring up my export settings and you can see that it will automatically export using the original footage. You don't have to worry about making sure that the proxies is off here in the program monitor. That's just for your own preview. So that's how you use proxy files. There are a few different things that might come up. I'm going to create a separate tutorial on working with proxy files if you are interpreting footage. Right now I'm just editing based off of my 5994 frame rate, but if you are going to interpret this and make it slower, 
which is more of an advanced technique, but a lot of people do that to slow down footage. You have to be careful about a few things with proxies and you'll find that other tutorial on my channel. The other thing I'll mention really quick is if you want to start a brand new project and automatically create proxies without going into the project panel, right clicking, choosing proxy, create proxies, you can go up to the file menu, go to new, and when you start a new project, under the ingest settings, if you choose this ingest option and then drop down from copy to create proxies, you can create proxies automatically and it's set, you can choose your preset here, you can choose your destination for the proxies, all of that. And once you import, whenever you import footage, it's automatically going to create a proxy file. The last thing I'll mention that you might want to know about is if for some reason your proxy file gets disconnected or something goes wrong, you can always attach proxy files by right clicking the clip that you want to kind of reattach, going to proxy and choosing attach proxies. Or for example, if you were creating proxies or someone else created proxy files for you and you needed to find them, you can do it this way. You also have this reconnect full resolution media button, which will basically get rid of the proxy file in the project so that you're just working with the full media file. But remember, even if you're working with proxy files right now, when you export, it's going to be at that full resolution or whatever resolution you want. Well, I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial, and if you did, please like and subscribe to the channel for more. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below in the comments. And if you're looking to take your skills to the next level, make sure you head over to videoschoolonline.com where we have premium courses, more free tutorials and articles, guides, and all kinds of stuff that will help you become a better creator. Thanks so much for watching and have a beautiful day.